everybody, Joe Joseph here for the DailySheeple.com, and this is your new shot. So, the New York Times highlights the negotiations that have started between the U.S., Canada, and Mexico as NAFTA negotiation begins, and with harsh words. Oh my, here we go. The rene- renegotiation of the North American Free Trade Agreement is off to a rocky start. How other way, <clears throat> or what other way would there be outside of a rocky start? <clears throat> I mean, let's be real. The North American Free Trade Agreement is what started us down the road of wages being depressed, cost of living going up, wages going down. Um, yes, did we get <clears throat> cheap Mexican stuff? Absolutely. But at what cost? You know, we've seen our manufacturing sector decimated because of North American Free Trade Agreement and other free trade agreements. So, it absolutely is fundamentally flawed. It has failed, and it's certainly benefited the other countries, Canada and Mexico, and certainly not <clears throat> North America, at least from an economic standpoint. You could say, <clears throat> you could say that North America has benefited, or the United States has benefited from the fact that we get cheaper goods. But what good is that when salaries go down at the same time? Now, I will say <clears throat> that if you were old enough to remember the 70s, the 80s, things were a lot more expensive relative to your income. For example, a television in 1980 or so, you know, like a 19-inch tube television. Those things cost anywhere from like three to 500 bucks. This was back in 1980. Now you can get a 42-inch flat screen for 150 bucks. So, yes, has these free trade agreements brought down the cost of goods? Perhaps, perhaps. Let's also not forget that the material that's being used to construct and manufacture these goods are materials that are a lot cheaper to extract and produce. Let's also not forget that China, now this isn't part of NAFTA, but we do have agreements in place with China, and China owns 90% of the rare earth element mines. Now, could you imagine, you know, you see all this rhetoric going back and forth with China as far as, well, you know, now we have to take a look at trade secrets being violated and everything with China, and boy, we're going to hold you to account. China's got us by the gonads. Because not only has the culture of convenience and this relentless push by... Madison Avenue, advertising agencies, public relations to encourage and foster an environment of extreme self-centeredness that if the rug was pulled out from underneath our trade with China, you would see skyrocketing costs with goods that people have become so addicted to. It's like I highlighted yesterday. Smartphone separation anxiety becoming an epidemic. China owns 90% of the rare earth element mines in the world. If we were to have a trade war with China, and let's just say, for example, they cut off the manufacturing or the they stopped exporting smart devices, computers, electronics to the United States, just that just that and we had to go about becoming self-sufficient in the manufacture of that first of all we would have to recycle a lot of these devices because we just wouldn't have the mines or the ability to get the raw material to make these goods as fast and as in these vast quantities as are needed by the demand of the American people so you'd have to Recycle it, well, that comes at a cost. You'd have to process it, that comes at a cost, right? Your smartphone, your iPhone, 
your Android just went from five hundred dollars to fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars a phone. Computers just go through the roof. This is what we would have to face if you wanted to go about changing the free trade environment. See, they knew that once it's like a tax. Once it's put in place, it's very hard to get rid of. Well, the same thing with these free trade agreements. Once they're in place, they're very, very hard to get rid of. Because once trade war kicks up, tr trade wars happen all the time. They're wars that are fought constantly without a shot being fired. Sometimes they lead to a shot being fired. Right now with China, there's a war going on between the United States and China behind the scenes and it could have very negative repercussions for the United States. It could have a, a lot of negative repercussions for China, too. They rely heavily on the consumption of Americans. So we should really pay attention to what's going on with NAFTA because it can also bleed over into our relations with China and also give us an idea of how the Trump administration and perhaps future administrations will deal with these new... Uh, with these free trade agreements. Now, Trump negotiated and said that, well, during his campaign, actually, Trump said that, you know, he wanted to do away with NAFTA. And of course, once he got in, he realized, oh man, it's not as easy as you might think. He says, this is a quote from Robert Lighthizer, uh, the U.S. trade representative who's leading the U.S. delegation to overhaul NAFTA. He says, we feel that NAFTA has fundamentally failed many, many Americans and needs major improvement. Now, the Canadian and Mexican delegation will tell you the total opposite, that they are committed to a regional trade balance. However, if you take a look at the trade deficit of the United States, we have a $55.9 billion trade deficit or $55.6 billion trade deficit last year, meaning that we imported $55.6 billion more into the United States than we exported out of the United States to Canada and Mexico. So it's clearly slanted in that regard. And you have to understand that if we were to go down the road of self-sufficiency, and you start firing up America's manufacturing again to the point where it was prior to these free trade agreements, things are going to cost a lot more because labor costs a lot more, benefits are a lot more. Look at health care. The cost of health care compared to health care in other countries, especially emerging economies. You're looking at health care costs to corporations and to individuals here in the United States vastly more expensive than should you go over to Canada and go south to Mexico, go to China. I mean, unbelievably more expensive. So a lot goes into this. But it is good that we're seeing dialogue now between the three, between the three countries to affect some change. Will it be possible to have any positive change with regards to NAFTA? I don't know. Will it be of any benefit to the United States? Probably not. Probably not, because... Oftentimes, it's much pomp and circumstance, but little substance in the end. So while it's good that they're talking about it, my hopes are not high that anything really substantial comes from these agreements or these changes to these agreements. All I can say is something's got to give because as time goes on and bubbles are made and people go more and more into debt, should we decide to go on our own at that time, it could trigger um, one of these bubbles bursting, whether it be the bond bubble or the stock market bubble that's going on, that could cause a really bad economic downturn. So they got to be really careful about how they handle this stuff. I'm Joe Joseph. This was the DailySheeple.com's News Shot. Feel free to comment below and visit our website at TheDailySheeple.com. Have a great day, everybody.